This is Sean Sport in podcast form. Fair bit happening in the landscape of sport at the moment. We're going to catch up with our good friend Steve Butler, writes all the great articles for the West Australian. One thing I didn't or, uh, mention this morning, Nate, mm. the AFL draft is taking place. Oh, really? You'll be watching that, surely. Oh, oh yeah, it's Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Already, I can't keep up. I said it to Matthew Pavlich the other day. I went, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, <laughs> you know what? They want football to happen all year, don't they? That's so we talk they, about yes, it all year. That's yes. what it is. All year. That's what all it is. Year. Not like crumpets when they used to just be for um, Christmas. Oh, sorry, um, winter. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Crumpets were just for winter. Really? Yeah. And that was it. And it was like crumpet season. Nah, and now you get all crumpets year round. For all year round. Now they're not special. Mm. Speaking of crumpets, good morning, Steve. <laughs> 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 oh, so kindly said. I feel like a piece of crumpet this morning. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you do. I'm proud of your crumpet, Steve. Well I'm, well, I'm quite delighted from your show this morning because I found out that the average male shoe size is a nine, <laughs> and that just means for the first time I'm above average in some biological part. Yeah, you are, Stephen. What, what, shoe, what shoe size do you have, Stephen? About a ten, Nathan. Uh, yes, oh. I'm about yeah, ten, ten, ten and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And oh, everyone you says, know, you about, know, they say about a bloke with big feet, don't you? <laughs> well, no. Apparently, big shoes. apparently they said my feet. Everyone <laughs> says that my feet are too small for my body. Really? Well, I'm six three, and I've got. Everyone thinks I should have. Flippers. Harry, what are you? Yours, your, what are you? Yes, eleven. Size eleven, but probably should have. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and you're you're six six five, but I'm agile. Very agile. <laughs> um, what, a, what, an, what an above average group of alpha males we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, Steve, on the shoe size, one thing I'll always remember is Ben Allen had the smallest feet I know, and his son could be drafted today. So Ben Allen's feet were a size seven or seven and a half. How tall was he? Oh, God, probably about my size, I'd say. No. Yeah, Sean, I reckon. Yeah. 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 How, do those people, how do they do It'll be very interesting to see yeah. if we can get Ed Allen uh, a draft position. I presume he will. And, uh, you know, they've, they've suggested around, obviously, that he could even end up at the Eagles. That would be pretty painful for free people, wouldn't it, John? I would have thought so. Do you reckon it, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, guys, for West Coast, who have started to hit the skids, um, to really regenerate in this first bit of the da- mm-hmm. draft tomorrow? Or today, sorry? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, it doesn't take long for good clubs to get it done, as I think I've said to you here before. And, you know, you've just got to make the, make the decisions go at it hard, and really, Fremantle have done it brilliantly over the last few years, I reckon, and it's time for the Eagles to follow the same suit. So if you're like a number one draft pick, right, mm-hmm. so you're, you know that everyone wants you, um, and you, it must suck if you know that the club that's probably going to get their hands on you is not something that you, yeah, want, you want to be part, part of, of, hey? Or do you, what happens? Do you get to Well, there's broke? so much early movement now. Like, yeah. you see, uh, Jason Horn francis he's gone before his contract's up. He's gone back home to South Australia, so from North Melbourne. So there's a lot of movement now, and there's probably less loyalty than there once was. And, you know, there's still kids that go through the system and want to, one, explore the opportunities away from their home base and see what life's like on the other side, and also show some loyalty to the club and, and repay the faith in those that gave you your first chance in footy. So there's still that sentiment out there, I think. Yeah, right. But at the same time, you know, the, the go-home pull factor with the family, it seems to be getting stronger each year. And, yeah, it's a, it's a, that makes it a real minefield for recruiters and clubs in the AFL because you've got to really do your due diligence to see what sort of lads that you're actually actually getting. And I know now that clubs, if there's a toss-up between an interstater and a homegrown yep. and they're both are out, are sort of regarded as the same talent, they're going to go for the homegrown, no doubt. you oh, got to cost you less as well hey, if Sean, you think about it. Back to your days when um, uh, you were first starting, what would have been your nightmare club? <laughs> oh, what would have been the nightmare club? I really didn't think that far there. ahead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way, purple all day. Um, I don't know, I, I, whatever team was down the bottom at the time, mm. but yeah, I think uh, my mind was already set like a year before because Fremantle were coming in, so I was always yeah. going to be there. But um, I know one of my friends who I was playing with at the same age, mm-hmm. at that point in time, if you were a young draft pick, you could put a price on your head and he put a pri- top oh, price top Oh, you can set head. your own oh, wow. price? That was back in my time, yeah, 1994, And how much did, what price did he put on his head? He put a, like $100,000 on, I'm pretty sure he got paid $100,000 to go to the Sydney Swans. I'm not going to say, Stephen might be able to guess who it was back in the day, but um, he got paid an extraordinary amount of wow. money. And everyone else, like my guys who I was playing with, I saw on Saturday night at about $7,500 was the first contract given to what, most wow. of the players. What, what price was on your head? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I never participated. Or did you have one. free with some carpet tiles? <laughs> <laughs> free to good home. Bloody oath, mate. Bloody oath. Uh, <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of buns from the Miller's Bakery. Yeah, that's it, Steve. <laughs> that's how I want to moment. Steve, the World Cup as well. Australia going to got their game on Thursday, but 
There was a couple of games overnight which went the wrong way for some big time nations. Well, it's been quite a crazy tournament to date, really. There's been some unbelievable wins and losses. I mean, Japan beating Germany and then losing to Costa Rica. And I mean, it's just a crazy tournament so far. But Australia are hanging in there now. They've got to play Denmark, which will be very tough for them. But I mean, it's been, I've found it quite unusual the way that it's gone. And there's been some teams that have really held back a little bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, it seems to have been quite circumspect. Whether, whether some of the bigger guns are waiting for the pointy end to really let loose. Some of the soccer's appeared a little bit circumspect to me. So, look, the big guns are all still in there, and they're still in with a chance. But there's, it's sort of shown that the, maybe the world's evened up a little bit and in world soccer, and you know, we get our chance. And you know, that, the goal by Mitch Duke was an absolute superb header. I mean, it was just so perfect. And to go through to the next round on that sort of header is just unbelievable. So, no, there are, I think you know, that's our first win for more than a decade in the World Cup I yeah. think since 2006. So 16 years uh, to get a win in the World Cup, it's a long time to wait. So look, we, I think our hopes are well and truly up and I'm pretty sure we've, we've, well, we have. We've put a very decent team on the park. There's no doubt about that. All right, mate. We'll really appreciate your time. It's good to see you on Friday for a beer, mate. Always oh, working. It was very nice. Yeah. I know. Mate, um, you, you, you saw my commitment, Sean. That's how <laughs> I roll. I know. I know. He goes to the Canfield afterwards and everyone else is sinking beers and he's got his laptop out there getting his, getting the story, getting, in. Getting his story in. That's Steve Butler. Right, and the, and that, was the, that appeared on the back page of the West on Saturday. So, yeah, it did. Know, just, we just get amongst it and away you go. That's right. Just remember, <laughs> everything you read from um, Steve is a drunken mess of the pub. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going straight back inside and starting to measure all my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Stephen. He's above average. Oh, we love him. Go. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Sean Sport in podcast form. <laughs> Well, what a surprise for Sean Sport. Uh, the bin chickens just walked in. Fuck bar. Well, I feel really bad when Nat's not here because you talked to me about sport and I thought, oh, I'm not really interested. And I thought, well, who's a bigger sports head than the bin chicken? I can't find them. Hi. Tim knows oh your sport. Gosh, you, I know. Were you up all night watching the World Cup games? Oh, absolutely. So what Who's was your favourite game? Um, uh, um, I loved it. FIFA. FIFA. Yeah. Go FIFA. <laughs> Go FIFA. Go FIFA. Well, the first game yesterday was Costa Rica versus um, Japan, and Japan were dominating the game the whole time. Uh, the Japanese fans are so great in the chat. Uh, They're the doing States, it though. again. You, you did talk about them. Just cleaning up the stadiums. Do you know that, Tim? So the Japanese fans, even in games that they're not involved with, the games that they lose, they're staying around after the game, and then they're walking around, and they're cleaning up the grand scan areas. Oh. That's so nice of them. Yes. Yeah. They were going off in the stands because their team were dominating without scoring and it was just seemed like a matter of time before they would get a goal. Uh, Costa Rica have not even had a shot on goal in their previous game, yep. nor had they in the first half of the game against um, Japan, and, and clearly they're going to lose. And then all of a sudden there was a, just a really basic turnover and the Costa Rican guy got the ball. He just kicked it towards the goals, nailed this absolute ripper, and Japan went down, lost 1-0. Oh. Heartbreak. Stuff. Everyone would hate that goalie, wouldn't oh, they? Well, the, I don't think it was a goalie's fault. It was a guy in the defence who just kind of gave oh, up really? a real soft pass and then and then the bloke flicked it past him. It was amazing. Wow. But they dominated. Unlucky I, for Japan. That was iconic. It was such a good match. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Croatia won. I've had the scores this morning. Germany got off the canvas to draw with Spain as well, so they were very lucky because you imagine Germany going absolutely bonkers if they had lost this one. That would have been out of the World Cup. Oh, Tim, imagine Germany, Germany? not in the World Cup. Uh, well, what World Cup would that be without Germany? I well don't said. know. Mate, exactly. Well said. It wouldn't be a World Cup. It wouldn't be because they're in the world. <laughs> yeah. Over to tennis and Australia went down to uh, uh, Canada in the Davis Cup final. We made it for the first time in many, many years, um, but um, we got beaten in straight sets. The guys who went out to play, Tanasi Kokonakis. Mm. Oh, That's, Tim knows him. Yeah. yeah. G- Kokonakis. Yes. Yeah, very familiar. Very familiar. <laughs> Alex Diminar both lost their games in straight sets, so we were done. Done and dusted in quick succession. Wow. They've really let Australia down, Sean. Yeah. Do, wait, do we, just back to the World Cup, do yes. we have, like, we're still in it, aren't we? We're, 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 we're surprisingly in it, aren't we? Yeah, so we were like, oh, I didn't even get back because we left here um, uh, uh, yes. straight, and straight and straight got the victory. So that was a big victory the other night. So we're we going to a scored. next round or no, something? No, no, so you play three anything. games. You play three <laughs> games in your group. We're playing our third game on Thursday, which against? will be against Denmark. So against the Danes, oh, the great yeah. Danes. The Dennies. And we also, so we need to be able to draw. So let's just the basic stuff. We just have to get a draw uh, against Denmark. So you'd almost 
defend like buggery, and then France just has to win, and we're and they're the best team in in, in the land. So um, they that would mean we'd progress. But I can imagine if Australia gets through, and whoever they play in the next round, Tim, you stop looking at me. You should be listening. Sorry. Um, Sorry. If Australia get through, whoever plays them would go. Oh, this is just an easy one because we're not that good. What do you think? Yeah, you know what? I'm so proud of Australia. Are they the Socceroos? <laughs> they are the Socceroos. Well done. I know. Slaying it. Slaying. slaying it. Slaying it. So Australia will be playing Denmark and it will be Thursday. And last thing I want to mention, the AFLW was oh. on yesterday, the grand final, everybody. Yes. Oh. They played the game at Springfield, Nath. I know, mate. And who was the uh, who was the halftime entertainment, Tim? Um... Um, Delta, Delta Good. Oh, really? Oh, look, oh. he's become interested. <laughs> <laughs> like Delta. <laughs> oh, how good. What did she sing? Uh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's Born to Try. Born to Try, obviously. Born to Try. Yeah, yeah. Oh, born to Try. Yes, she was. Sitting on top of the world, perhaps? She yeah, would have had a, a bit one. of... Oh, I actually know. didn't I'm see it. I, I saw some top of the game, the Nathan, and it nearly put me to sleep. The <gasps> game was two goals seven to two goals three. Um, was the winning score. Two goals, seven to two goals, three. And fair dinkum, that was like watching grass grow. It was horrendous. But mm. Melbourne got the victory. Daisy Pearce finished it on a high. So yeah, but you know what? They might just be taking a leaf out of the low-scoring um, World Cup. <laughs> because oh that sounds like it's some yeah, soccer scores, it doesn't it? It's horrendous to watch. Okay, anyway, for cricket lovers, we have got the Perth Test that gets underway. You can watch every ball of the Perth Test we'll live and our break out. free we'll during play on cricket. Fox Cricket. Yes. Available on Foxtel and KO Sports. We've got a couple of doubles to give away to this first test. Tim, give us a call now. 13, 24, 13 10. 24, 10. Call is six and number eight, Tim. If you're good enough, you will get your double passes to watch the cricket here. Tim, you want at that, the don't stadium. you? Australia Absolutely. versus oh, West Oh, you're so busy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> keep trying, Tim. Call is six and eight. <laughs> Am I? Oh, oh, are you done? Oh, my God. Oh, give him the ticket. Let's get him up. Oh, my God. Get him up. Ruby, can we put him on? Thank you. Oh, this is so exciting. We've never done this before. Hello, who's Hello. this? Hi, I'm, Hi, I'm caller number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you're, wow. you're caller number two. I asked for caller six and eight. Oh, oh, oh. Dave, you don't get to go to the cricket. Oh, that's all right. Thank you anyway. Love your work. Love your show. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.